This is part three of rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine. And in this one, I'm having a look at the crankshaft. What I thought I'd do is put the crankshaft in the lathe, check how true it was, and clean it up with some sandpaper. A quick note about cleaning things up in the lathe like this. I would try and avoid using the woven type of emery cloth, because the problem with that stuff is if it catches up in the work, the woven type of very strong emery cloth may actually drag your fingers into the moving parts. This stuff is standard sandpaper, and if it gets caught up it will just tear, leaving your fingers intact, hopefully. A quick health and safety warning. This is a very dangerous procedure, and I cannot recommend that anybody does this. You can watch me do it, that's okay. I've been depriving some poor village of its idiot for years. If you do this at home, and you get it wrong, you will spend quite a long time in A&E and may lose some fingers. It is a good idea to always treat machine tools with great respect because they can do you a lot of harm. Something just did not feel right with this crankshaft so I took it out of the chuck and gave it a tap test. By tapping it with a metal bar, or in this case a spanner, it should have a nice ring to it like this 5A crankshaft. This is a brand new 5A crankshaft and it's perfect. When I tapped this crankshaft a little bit harder, this is what happened. It broke in two, at the eccentric end, not at the flywheel end. And if you have a close look at this, you will see that this has been broken for quite a long while. I put very little stress on the crankshaft to achieve this result. Quite a dangerous situation. The solution to this problem, however, is fairly simple. I'm just going to make another crankshaft. So I'm taking the measurements from the old one. The crankshaft throw is one and three quarter inches. Each of the bearing journals were just under half an inch in diameter, so obviously there's been a bit of wear over the years. So half an inch in diameter will be fine for the new ones. And the diameter of the main part of the crankshaft, that's the part that goes through the flywheel, and the other end, which is broken off, that goes through the eccentric, is three quarters of an inch. It's a very simple crankshaft. I'm a very simple man, so it should not be a great problem. What I will probably end up doing is making a separate video on the subject of how to make a steam engine crankshaft. I will also of course include it in this series, but in less detail. As in previous videos, I'm putting all the parts into a polythene container and half filling the container with some cellulose thinners. What I'm going to do today though is just leave them in there. Normally I would scrub them off with a paintbrush, but there's no point because the paint will just fall off after they've been in the thinners for a while. And then with very little effort, a simple wipe with the paintbrush, and it'll be bare metal. Turning my attention to the bed plate, I'm applying some cellulose thinners to that also, mainly to remove all the residue, the filth and grime that's accumulated, not to mention the swarf from it being under the drilling machine. Sometimes I do this outside, but my workshop really is very well ventilated, so I can do things like this inside, as it's raining slightly out there. Briefly, before I finish this episode, I'd just like to mention some more about the crankshaft. I really am glad that the crankshaft fractured the way that it did, because whilst running an engine like this under test, and it's quite a weighty engine, it would not be good if the crankshaft fractured and the one foot diameter, extremely heavy cast iron flywheel was to suddenly shoot around the workshop. So I'll be thankful for small mercies. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.